I feel it's safe to say that I have a bit of an obsession with food. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people like it and enjoy food, and to me it's to live and to be with others while eating. That's nice and all, but for me, it's gone to a whole other level, where I will drive two and a half hours to LA City Walk just to get a delicious triple chocolate penetration donut from Voodoo Donuts. It's just so good. <laughs> well, completely ignoring all the other dozens or baker's dozens of donut shops that I pass just to get there. I don't like to use the term obsession, though. No, that makes it sound like I have a problem. Instead, I prefer to use the term like, I have a loving attachment to food. Sure, I could go on saying that I have a refined and superior palate of the gods and stop at any meal not made by Gordon Ramsay. And that I only eat the, fr the finest of meats, the freshest of vegetables, and sip the creamiest of chocolate milk. I'm still only 18. Um, but in reality, as much as I love fine food, I'm still that girl who in 10th grade went dumpster diving for a pack of pizza and melted ice cream. God, I do love that chocolate. And I'm definitely that person who believes in the 5 to 15, 20 second rule. <laughs> Very <laughs> And will absolutely steal candy from babies. <laughs> I just, I think I have a deep appreciation for food. Not only in how it tastes, but how it can be used in our relationships. How it can be passed down and slow roasted through generations and centuries of family tradition. Or just quickly whipped up in a brilliant infamy for a simple 3 a.m. snack. It's something we all need, yet very often we depend on others for it. Parents, friends, loved ones. We sometimes give complete strangers control over our food. In my case in point, fast food workers. Now, the fast food industry and its workers is often considered to be the lowest rung on the ladder of the career success route. Yet, we're given so much power in what everyone else puts in their mouths, and surprise, surprise, I have been and still am on this lowest rung. A little less than a year ago, I got a job at one of these fast food joints, and now, for legal reasons, let's just call them Schwendies. <laughs> so, at Schwendies, I had a pretty easy task of just making the salad, the sandwiches, putting and dropping the fries. Pretty simple stuff. Yeah, almost too simple and really, really mind-droppingly boring. Often leaving my mind and feet to wander around. I got into the addictive habit of customer watching. I just spend half my shift sometimes just staring at people in a distant space at, at the moms too busy to make, to make dinner or the joggers coming in for that tiny cheap meal of jumbo fries and a large drink. <laughs> But for the most part, it's just hungry people, and the job's okay. I'll get the occasional asshole who's in a rush, but I usually just brush it off. But after working there for about a week, I learned how to cook chicken, wash lettuce, cut myself twice on jelly slicer, and almost started to respire. So, basic work stuff. <laughs> I was getting the hang of it, and I already made my first work friend, a super sweet but yet really trash-talking girl named Sarah, who took orders in the front. And one afternoon, I was alone at the salad station, and trying to get a bit creative with the construction of lettuce wraps and trying to find new interesting ways to make the salad a little more artistic and interesting. <laughs> As I said, it can get pretty boring, especially when your only company in the back of the kitchen are squash lettuce, lettuce leaves, uh, squishy carrots, and smelly cheese. But that afternoon, Sarah walked over and told me about a special order. Hey Aaron, a new customer just asked for a salad with no leaves. You know what that is? <laughs> Me, being the new girl, automatically thought it was just some order that I forgot to memorize and took me panic. Uh, no, they just want no spinach leaves, right? Sarah, looking as confused as I was, said, I think they don't want any spinach or lettuce at all. I'm thinking to myself, wait, they just want carrots, tomato, and chicken bits, I had? And when I asked why, she said, the hell if I know. So after that nonsense, nonsense of making a no salad salad, I guess, which is a thing, because there's been like three others since then. <laughs> but I mean, who goes out of their way to stop at the delicious Schwendies and, and ask for salad when all they really want was just one of those side Costco vegetable dish trays? The request definitely got a little too extra at times, and people got really insane with their food. There was a super busy lunch rush one day, and a line was out the door, drive through was packed, all the grills and fryers were on, food was going nonstop. It felt and smelled like I was trapped inside a microwave, filthy, dirty microwave that no one ever bothered to clean. Which, honestly, we didn't have one of those, so it could have just been that. <laughs> but I was at the fry station, and the entire front of my apron and pants were covered in a shiny, greasy film of old oil and salt. 
Plus, the hella bright overhead lights had me worried that I was going to pass out from heat stroke. When I noticed Sarah coming toward our kitchen, in her hand, she showed us one of the girls' sandwiches we make. It looked fine, but I thought maybe we forgot to add something. But no, she said that it wasn't cooked right. It was, it was cooked fine. But I still offered to make another one. Hold on, a little history first on this grilled chicken sandwich. It's freaking delicious. <laughs> it really is, and I'm the first one to admit that our food, most of it, complete crap. <laughs> but this beautifully grilled chicken placed on a bed of fresh lettuce and a golden toasted meat bun, it's, it's incredible. It's really the only good food here. That and maybe our milkshakes are pretty good too. But I mean, come on, it's me and chocolate. Anyway, back to the ridiculous that's about to unfold. About three minutes after I've made another sandwich, Sarah walks in with an expression that reads, Strap it in, it's just gonna go downhill from here. <laughs> Sarah had said that the customer told her that she didn't want the dark lines on the grilled chicken. <laughs> and in the back of my mind, I'm overhearing and thinking, she wants a grilled chicken with no proof that it's been grilled? I mean, the name of the pit and the picture of the food are on the menu. She knows how, what a grilled chicken is and how it works, right? And he used to have grill marks on it. So I made one more, and not a minute later, Sarah walks back in, and I look at her and I said, no, I can't, and it's just no, I can't do it again. <laughs> Sarah replies, I know it's weird, but the lady out there says she knows chicken, and that this shouldn't have these grill marks on it. <laughs> and I'm so frustrated at this point, at how ridiculous it keeps can be, and also wanting to die of laughter just thinking how crazy this all got me. But Sarah, being the awesome person that she is, told the customer that something was wrong with her grill and encouraged her to order the chicken nuggets instead, totally saving me from a mental breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> After a few months of working there and getting a little more used to things, I actually got some orders right and done on time, and I made some new friends, started having some chicken nugget fights in the back, good stuff. <coughs> there would still be the occasional customer from hell that invokes fear in all the fast food workers. <laughs> This particular hot summer day, where my coworker and I met this demon in the blue Honda, that actually started off pretty good. Okay. A bit busy in the morning rush, but nothing too hard. Customers were in a hurry, but mostly polite. It was around one when the events occurred. Lunch crowd was beginning to pick up, and there were about four or five cars in the drive thru I was assembling and wrapping the sandwiches. My coworker Sarah was out in the drive thru taking orders on the street to speed things up. I was working a particularly specific order that wanted extra pickles when I heard four loud, distinct honks, tires screeching, and then silence. Thinking someone just got a bit impatient about the cars in front of them, I let it go. Then I heard the back door slam, heavy breathing, and which other coworkers and I turned to see. There was Sarah, clearly distraught, and then with a shaky breath, she told everyone a woman had pulled up. And instead of talking directly to Sarah, like how we normally do with our customers, and like how any decent person would, she told her she told her order through her son in the passenger side, who then told Sarah what she what the monster had wanted. That, and then the customer began to complain loudly about the wait time, which was three minutes. I checked, and Sarah's inability to perform even the basic task of remembering her order and the poor customer service. When in reality, Sarah was just repeating the order back, like we do for every customer. And after the she devil had changed her order twice, yelling at Sarah each time in the process, she then proceeded to throw water in her face, call her a stupid bitch, and then speed to the front, almost running over Sarah's foot in the process. I asked if she was okay, and she barely nodded, but kept shaking. And we had dealt and laughed with her customers in the past before, but I saw that this really got to her. Now this whole series of events took place in a relatively quick time, and without a second thought, quickly jumped into action of needing to protect my friend's honor and that of all fast food workers everywhere. <laughs> if I wasn't blinded by anger and those stupid bright lights, I would have half expected a light bulb to pop over my head. I knew the blue Honda and its driver, who had verbally assaulted Sarah, was now in the front window, and I knew I had to hurry before the car left, so I quickly headed over the grill. There was a catch bin, which had yet to be cleaned out about every two days, and in it was filled with this delicious grease, slime, ash, old eggs from this morning, a bit of pickle fry, and actually the grease in there. Well, I managed to finish the sandwich in time, and had a special dish ingredient that was delicately wrapped in the sandwich, totally unsuspiciously, and then I saw the witch-like acrylic nails grab it and speed away. Thank you. Please come again. I think people tend to forget how much control fast food workers have over well their own food. And how, for the most part, we just want you to enjoy your food. We spent good time making it, and we want you to have a good time and 
get with what you paid for. But even the most mild-mannered and food-appreciative person can snap sometimes. So please, please be nice to us, and we'll be nice to your food. <laughs>